Okay. Very Hi, welcome to House of E. The Ghostman Radio Station. And tonight, my guest is Stephen Martin, who is going to talk about his book, Fast Track to Higher Consciousness, which is very interesting, very good theories. And I would recommend it to change your mindset a little bit. He's, he's teamed up le recently with a TV company to help him out produce some stuff. And he's going to tell me a little bit about it. He's trying to raise some money to cover the production costs, because we all know it don't come cheap. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I, uh, I've i been trying to get the word out about the true nature of reality for about 30 years now. I've written uh, about a half a dozen books on the subject, and this is my latest one, Fast Track to Higher Consciousness. <laughs> Basically, uh, I'm trying to get information out that I think would help everybody to know, and that is that we are all eternal spiritual beings that are just happen to be having a temporary physical experience. That the um, the ground floor of reality is consciousness itself. It's consciousness that we all share, even though we think we're separate. We're not. We're all part of one life, and uh, and if everybody knew that. Uh, maybe there wouldn't be so many wars in the world and hatred and, you know, different religions fighting mm. each other, politicians battling it out. Over here in the United States, our our politicians can't agree on anything. <laughs> it's amazing. Kind of good in a way because they don't get anything at all done. So yeah, it's a strange way. There you go. What do you think about all that, Mark? I, I think it, I like the idea of consciousness because I think we... When we was in COVID, we became more aware of it, like we said before. And then we sort of lost it again because we've all got back into our trappings, you know, because it's we it's our comfort blanket, if you know what I mean. It's what we do. Humans as a species like to have a comfort. They like to think that we are mortal in some ways. I know we're not, but we like to think that. Yeah, I don't know. I you know a lot of people probably think uh, that when they die, that's it. But I've written a couple of books that uh, call on, you know, scientific evidence, quantum mechanics. Uh, there's a research outfit up at the University of Virginia, not far from me, where they've been studying children's memories of past lives for over 60 years. They started in 1962. They've collected over 2,500 uh, cases, and they've managed to find uh, what they well what they call solve 1,700 of them, where they've actually found the individual that the child said he was based on the names and occupations and places place where he lived and or she and relatives and all that have checked out. So, you know, there are there's plenty of evidence for reincarnation. Um, there's all, they're also studying near-death experiences. They've studied thousands of them. Uh, in fact, the University of Virginia uh, resident at their medical school wrote the first book that I'm aware of on near-death experiences called Life After Life. It was Raymond Moody who wrote that in 1975. So, uh, there, is, there are a lot of facts out there, a lot of evidence that back up the uh, ideas that I'm putting forth in this new book. And uh, I'm, I'm working now with a TV production company that has shows already on uh, our public television here in the United States. We're hoping to get this one done, a series as well as a full length film, and get it out there soon if we can get if we can raise the money to get it done. So I appreciate that's, that's you. Really, that's the trouble. That's the trouble with. New ideas. I I think we or should all embrace new ideas. I've got a theory that even if you don't quite a hundred percent understand it, because every new idea you've got to research, 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 and look into it as much as you can, and then it will sink in. And like you say, you start thinking, "Wait a minute, Stephen said this. You know, that makes sense now because I read this last week, this article. You know, then you read another article." And then you read another one. And it's out there. 
but you just got to find it, like you said. It is out there, and, and it seems like the uh, what we call the mainstream media doesn't want to touch this subject because it is controversial. You know, they're still teaching uh, what I call physicalism or um, scientific materialism in schools where they, they're telling you that all that exists is material subject, subject does matter. Matter is all there is. And, and if that's true, then uh, we're just sort of like meat robots that have computer-like brains. And when we, when our body dies, that's the end. But there's a lot of evidence showing that's not true. I, I've got uh, in my book, so uh, research that's been done on psychics that they actually can uh, tell, uh, communicate with, uh, with people who are passed on. Uh, the, they've done double blind studies on this. Uh, there's also research on, as I said, uh, um, past out of body experiences when people are clinically dead where they're able to tell what the doctors and the nurses are saying in the operating room where they are in with when they're trying to revive them things like that to say the brain really isn't uh, what creates consciousness the brain is a receiver of consciousness that is kind of non-local and uh, it only seems like it's taking place inside our head because that brain is a receiver, They're like a receiver like your cell phone or your TV set is a receiver of information and, and material that comes from somewhere else. So, well, the brain does produce electronic pulses, doesn't it, to make, like we now, like speaking, the brain says, you must speak, then listen. It's all these electronic pulses telling you this signal comes down, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a sig yeah, what it is, it's picking it up like a radio. There's no doubt that the brain influences your consciousness. Obviously, if you uh, if you have too much to drink or uh, take drugs or whatever, it's going to change uh, change your consciousness consciousness just the same as if you drop your cell phone and uh, and break it, <laughs> it's not going to work. But uh, it is a receiver that integrates your consciousness with your body. And uh, and all those little things that light up when they're studying your brain are showing what's working. It's it, but just like the TV show you watched is not inside your TV set, the consciousness that you have is not inside, not created by your brain. Just as the TV set doesn't create the show, so uh, that's the thing I want to get out there because I think if people realize they were eternal, that they're going to be around forever. They might uh, it might change their outlook on things, <laughs> and uh, if we realize that we're really all part of one one big life, and it only seems like we're separate, we might be nicer to each other. Bark, what do you say? I think so. I think so. It would be not. It's not. I'm I'm a great believer that um, sometimes, like we like when we have a Remembrance Day or when we. Um, for the dead, the, the war dead and that, we all join together for two minutes. The world sort of stops for two minutes. Like, you know, everybody sort of joins in. That's like, like you say, that massive consciousness that's yes. gathered for that two minutes. I know people say, yeah, but two minutes. I say, yeah, but that, like, that could happen daily if we wanted to do it. It's just yeah. that uh, we, because we want to get on with our lives and we don't, we read about conflict, but we don't want to deal with conflict. But when it happens, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's plenty of conflicts going on now in the Middle East and Ukraine and so forth. And, of course, China wants to take over Taiwan. And it just seems to me that uh, it's people's egos that get, you know, big, fat egos want to rule the world. And they want to do it their way. And if you can't do it their way, it's not going to happen. And uh, that we need to come, you know, kind of get past that. Egos are something that developed, I guess, w during evolution to keep us safe. You know, we wanted to, we needed to worry about things, what, like whether or not we were going to, where our next meal was coming from and whether there was a tiger behind, behind a bush or whatever. And, and, 
I mean, that helped keep us. Now we don't need to have that ego telling us uh, that we're better and that we're, uh, you know, that we need to do this or that that may harm others. I mean, really, uh, we, it's one of the things I try to tell people is you need to, before you react to a situation, there's a moment when you can pause and really stop and think about it and then decide whether to react rather than uh, just punch. That's what I'm learning to do before, but before I would react more, I've slowly learned to think, why? Yeah. Is it going to make any difference? No. So right. don't, don't, you know. Well, that's it. You know, uh, you're not at the mercy of those. You, you, you may be triggered by something, but what I try to do is say, now, why did that trigger me? Why did I get upset about that? And, uh, you know, and that just sort of dissipates it because really just because somebody else says something or does something, you don't have to react to it. There's no law that says you have to, even though you feel the impulse to, you can hold your, you can keep yourself back from doing so. And life will be better if you, if you're, you do that. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have an opinion or uh, shouldn't uh, discuss a, an issue with someone, but at least try to do it rationally rather than uh, lashing out or uh, arguing about it. You know, I found that arguing doesn't do any good. I mean, you're not going to change people with, with a heated argument. Uh, what will maybe change them is getting them to stop and think and it's asking them why they have a particular opinion and maybe listening to what they have to say and perhaps might even change your mind. So uh, that's another thing that I'm trying to do with my books. And, and part of this new one, Fast Track to Higher Consciousness, is devoted to that. I have a chapter on the ego and <clears throat> and how, uh, and pretty much what we've just been talking about. So there you go, Mark. Well, yeah, that, that, as I say, that, that, this is the fascination of how I like to talk to people like yourself, Stephen, about different theories, different ideas, because we, we've we learned to, this, this word, we control words. It's like I've been watching, re-watching the series The Prisoner, and they've taken out where he says, I am a free man, and they put, I, I am a free person. I know it's not much, but I'm just thinking, why? Because this series is about a man being imprisoned by whatever, but he wants to be free of fault. So therefore, you've taken away that idea by changing the word from man to person because it doesn't fit in this new idea, well, like you said, <laughs> new, new ideas. And that is like another consciousness that we control. We try to control this consciousness as well, don't we? Well, absolutely. I, what you're talking about is very prevalent here in the United States nowadays about, you know, uh, all the words that are no longer uh, acceptable. You can't say mankind. You have to say humankind. You can't, uh, <laughs> you know, whether men can, and can marry men and women can marry women and uh, may all that be legal. I mean, I don't care what people do. It's their business. But it seems to me uh, there's, a, there's you know, the idea of changing, of making certain words taboo is kind of crazy. Uh, you can't say uh, Oriental. You have to say Asian. <laughs> Why? I don't get it. Doesn't Oriental mean Asian? Well, it's like people would listen to your or read your book and they may say oh well this is a load of bunkum you know like they will you know that that there's been little people out there like that but then i look at it and say yeah but years ago if i looked up to you and said i'm going to vent an object and you'll be able to talk to it for miles away so that someone's two three four thousand miles away from you and you'd be like you're talking to them if they were next door and you couldn't record it People were gone, yeah, okay, in the bin. <laughs> That's right. You know, how would you, I don't know about you, but I often use the GPS on my my uh, cell phone to, to find the address, you know, where I'm going. I've never been before. 
how would you be able to, how would you explain a GPS to someone in, uh, in 1940? How, how, how would you explain that? You'd have to, you'd have to talk about satellites and, and, uh, information going up and coming down and, uh, <laughs> and a cell phone. Uh, I mean, I rented a car recently. I actually was a truck that, uh, because I had to take something for my wife, uh, some furniture and it has a little gizmo on it where if you go over the, uh, dotted line without using your blinker, it starts buzzing and the, and the wheel and the steering wheel shakes because it's got a GPS saying you need to be in that lane. And if you don't signal with your blinker that you're gonna go in, in, into the other lane or make a turn, it's gonna tell you by make, making the steering wheel shake and a buzzer to go off that you're not driving correctly. <laughs> now, how would you explain that to somebody a hundred years ago or even 50 years ago? Do you, when, you say, when you said about the conscious mind, do you think that people would probably say that you may be saying like a hive mind, like like what like bees and ants and that? I know it's not on the same scale, but they have like a hive mind, don't they? They so someone tells that person you got to collect, you got to collect, you got to go on the front, you got to collect the food. If you, it's like you say, we'd like, if we were this antenna, where do you think the conscious mind's coming from? Well, I, that's a, that's really a good uh, question and a very interesting topic that I have looked into. Where uh, hive animals like bees, ants, apparently, and some birds, for example, you know, or fish uh, swim in a stream in a uh, school. And if something interrupts the school, it uh, scatters, but then it all comes back together. Apparently, they have have a kind of joint consciousness, a community type consciousness that operates as a single organization, organization like your body is. But of course, they are physically separated by, you know, in the case of fish, water, but in case of bees, the air. But yet they they operate as as one. And ants, for example, there have been studies done that uh, where they the ant has a uh, nest, I guess is what an ant has, and they put a metal bar down through the middle of it. But when the ants are making uh, their little tunnels, they'll tunnel up and they'll meet exactly where they would connect if that metal bar was metal. Uh, piece of metal wasn't in the way. So somehow they're communicating to each other psychically. And uh, there have been studies showing, for example, that uh, animals like a dog uh, will uh, know when his owner is coming. Even, like, for example, let's say uh, the owner takes a bus home from work. When the, when the and they've used video cameras to demonstrate this. They'll show the owner getting off the bus. They'll show the dog in the living room stand up and walk toward the door because he knows he's coming. He didn't see him, but the dog has a psychic connection with his master. And uh, there are other many, many studies that have been done like that. So the idea that the brain uh, that the, your consciousness is contained within your brain, and that's it. It's like a computer, and when you plug, pull the plug, that's it. Yet people don't know the facts because they usually aren't covered in the mainstream media. That's why we're trying to make this TV series and the film I've been talking about so that we can get these facts out there and people can understand that things really aren't the way they've been thinking they are. Uh, that in a way it's a whole lot better because when you when your body dies you're going to pass on to an, another uh, more mental realm and if you want to come back uh, you'll be able to and be born through you know a birth canal as you were this time into a new physical body so uh, I'm you know I'm not pushing any kind of religion 
I'm just trying to get the facts out. Uh, I think that there's a little bit of truth in practically every religion, but they it's all they've all been kind of tampered with by people who have their own. They've been tampered by <laughs> the people that conquered. Because right. in the original Bible, there was a lots of women in the Bible. But I think it's Carigaro or some emperor didn't like women. So he went, right, right. He, he wrote them completely out as such. Well, that's true. And also, for example, uh, Justinian, the Emperor Justinian in 551, uh, the Second Council of Constantine, told the Pope he had to get uh, reincarnation out of the doctrine. And he, the Pope didn't want to, but he bent to the emperor's wishes. And that's why Christianity doesn't have reincarnation in it, like practically all the other Eastern, all the Eastern religions certainly do. Uh, it's because Justinian felt that if people thought they were going to have another chance at, at uh, salvation, that they might not toe the line and, and do what, you know, he wanted. So it was a control thing. Uh, but up until 551, uh, uh, reincarnation was part of the Christian religion. And there are plenty of uh, examples of Jesus talking about uh, talking about that. For example, he said that uh, John the Baptist was Elijah. Well, Elijah lived 400 years before John the Baptist. Uh, but the, you look it up. There's a quote where he's, people say, and people ask Jesus, who are you? And I mean, Jesus asked his disciples, who are you? And the disciples said, well, some people think you're John the Baptist and others think you're one of the prophets. Well, the last prophet died 400 years before Jesus was born. Again, uh, if he was one of the prophets, he would have to have been one of the prophets reincarnated. And perhaps he was, who knows? But this example of how an idea, a conscious idea, because when you know, I'm not looking faith now. I'm just saying it's an idea. If you said the same thing now, it'd be just an idea. It wouldn't be the faith that it become. It'd just be the idea. I think that the idea is spread, and like all books, some things have been exaggerated a bit. Not being horrible, but it's like when you catch it, you tell a fish story. Oh, the fish is this big. No, it was it's this big. Yeah, I mean, it, it's only little bits that have probably been all nothing. I'm not saying the whole thing's rubbish, but you know what I mean? If you tell a story, any story, oral or written, it's going to get changed at one point. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we used to, when I was in elementary school, you would, uh, we had this exercise that we did a couple of times where uh, you, the first person at this, over on this side of the class would tell somebody something and then that person would turn and tell the next person and so on and so forth. And when it finally got around to the last person in the room who heard about it, it had nothing to do with how it started out. It would show how things would change when people repeat a story. Uh, <laughs> they would add to it or subtract from it or whatever. And really uh, it can get all twisted around by the time it's repeated over and over again. So that sort of thing definitely can happen. Where do you think you'll get most of your support for your TV show from? Where do you think, if say someone said, oh, if we place uh, a certain adver advertising or um, some sort of support from a charity or something? Yeah. Well, we may get that. We're, we're looking for sponsors. Uh, we would want to have sponsors that make sense for the message that we're trying to to get out there. Yeah. But uh, I think it's quite possible. I mean, I, for one thing, I believe that uh, it could be very philanthropic in the sense I've told you about. We talked at the beginning about the uh, policies and uh, programs and how the Congress people in our Congress the Republicans and the Democrats can't agree on anything. And, and if we could get the message out that, hey, listen, we're all really in this thing together. We're one life. We need to cooperate. Uh, it 
it could make a big difference and make life a lot better for all of us. So uh, I think that there are going to be people who believe that a shift in consciousness toward understanding about consciousness itself and the fact that it's something we all share, there's only really one consciousness. It just seems that we each have our own. Uh, that that it could make the world a better place. And so I'm hoping that people who want to get that message out will contribute. And also perhaps we'll find some organizations that uh, can really do some big funding. We're in the process. I had a meeting this morning, a breakfast meeting this morning with someone who's interested. So we'll see, we'll see. But uh, It's stepping stones, on. isn't it? It's stepping stones. It's getting oh, yeah. that one step. Then someone says, oh, he's interested. Oh, I wonder what that's about. And then they get interested. And then it, it starts running. It's It's all... The extra cost that people don't realize it's not just the talking to camera. That's the be best bit. It's just the editing and lighting, um, how you would try it through uh, a visual means rather than a written means. Yeah, that's exactly right. And by the way, if people want to know more about this and uh, they could come to my website. There's information on the website, but you can also download a little book that I've written that explains uh, what I'm trying to do and uh, contains information that we will, will be putting into this uh, film and TV show. And it's free. They All they have to do is click on the download button and, and they'll get a PDF that they can read on their computer or print out if they wish. And so uh, my my website is easy to remember, shmartin, S-H-M-A-R-T-I-N.com, S-H-M-A-R-T-I-N.com. You can download that, won't cost a penny. Uh, find out uh, what we're up to and how we're going about it and, uh, and decide whether you think it's a worthy cause or not, maybe, uh, send us a couple of shillings or whatever you all have over there. Well, that's what it's all about. You don't, at the end of the day, nobody has to believe anything you say or do. That's the way I look at things. I've learned the hard way. I can put something on and nobody watches it. Then I can put a stupid little short on it like, like that and 2,000 people watch it. And you're thinking, well, it's a stupid thing. But that's the world it's become. Nobody wants to concentrate more than um, half an hour, 40 minutes. It's because it, we've become a oh, yeah. like, short attention spans, very yeah. short attention spans. Most videos, well, you know, back when I first started in the advertising business, we would make TV commercials that lasted a minute. Well, minute is a long time. And nowadays, uh, it wasn't long before it was 30 seconds. And nowadays, even shorter. So, uh, of course, in, in probably in Europe, they still have them at the end of the round. We stick them in the middle and all through. So we need to make them short. But, yeah, people have short attention spans, Mark. There's no question about it. Shorter well, than they used to be. I've, I've enjoyed our little chat, Stephen. And I recommend people go and look up your book, look up your website. I hope you're successful with your TV series because I would want to look at it and watch it. And because, like I said, if you don't like the idea, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not going to go, oh, well, I'm disappointed now. That's it. You can storm off into your cupboard or whatever. You can only, you can't influence people unless they're willing to listen. That's the one thing that we both learn. Yes, absolutely. No question about it. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Thanks for having me on your podcast. And I uh, let me know when it's going to run. And uh, I appreciate Yeah, I'll send you the copy as soon as I get the recording back myself. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Bye. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.